thanks so much for looking in. How is your day going? I, I am Andy and my day is going very well indeed. Thanks. We've also got uh, Tinkerbell there, but she is asleep today. And I'm not going to start waving biscuits at her this time. If I do that too often, the biscuits aren't going to be good for her. That's what I think anyway. So it's the 1st of December. Actually, before I launch into this, let me apologise for the last video uh, that I posted, which uh, got a good response, you know, as always, and I appreciate that. Thanks so much, guys. But I'm very sorry that uh, the speech didn't line up with the picture, you know, so uh, that's quite disconcerting. Sorry about that. Still getting used to my new computer. But uh, here I am again on the old camera. This seems to uh, to work well. The old ways are the best, are they not? Anyway, 1st of December, and that means that we're 20 days, just a bit less than three weeks away from the 21st of December, when, as I'm sure you're aware by now, because lots of people are talking about it, there's going to be a very interesting alignment between Jupiter and Saturn. They're going to come within one degree of each other, actually pass each other in the night sky. That is going to create an incredibly bright star, although really it's a combination of two bright stars, but it's just going to look like a super bright star in the sky. And um, it has been said, you know, that there's going to be a lot of trouble uh, around that. I don't know, you know, I really don't believe it's the end of the world, as uh, one of our British newspapers, The Sun, has, uh, has claimed it is. The Sun it, it claims all kinds of crazy things and none of them ever happen. But uh, the sun reckons it's the end of the world. I think what we're actually looking at is something perhaps rather similar to what happened in 2012, when it was an epic year for many, many people. And I, I had a really crazy year, uh, eight years ago now, in, in 2012. Um, I was in a relationship that, that didn't end well and was incredibly crazy as it went along. And when I look back on 2012, it really was an epoch-making year in my life. Um, I'm thinking about 2020. So far, it has been a really nutty year, has it not? We've got this health emergency going on all around the world and just craziness everywhere. Uh, there are predictions of economic collapse and things like that happening because of this uh, Jupiter and Saturn alignment. Um, well, maybe. But, you know, we've had these crises before involving money and, you know, the end of the world and all that. And I'm sure that what's going to happen is someone's going to print a load of money and lend it to people, even though it wasn't their money in the first place. And everyone will have to pay it back. And it could lead to great austerity. It could lead to lots of things. But I don't believe it's going to be the end of the world. Uh, that side of this prophecy to me is is a bit like is is it the uh, the LDS the Latter Day Saints Church or the Jehovah's Witnesses or someone? Um, one of the uh, religions claims every now and again that it's going to be the end of the world, and they all kind of go up the holy mountain or wherever it is, and then they come down and say, "Oh well, no, it wasn't the end of the world this time, but uh, you know, we, we we were right. There was just something went wrong with it. So uh, it's going to be the end of the world on on this day instead. It's going to be a different day." to what we originally said. And uh, I guess the world will come to the end one day, but I don't believe it's going to be the 21st of December, not by a, a very long way. However, on the 14th of December, we have a total solar eclipse, and that's going to be the seventh eclipse that we've had this year. I've mentioned that several times in the last few videos, so I won't go on too much about it. But basically, the ancient Babylonian astrologers who kicked off Western astrology as we know it today, uh, they kind of started off, you know, and, and more or less got it right, actually, um, when, when they started off taking records of star movements and things to do with that. I'm sure that, uh, you know, long, long before ancient Babylon, uh, from the beginning of time, human beings were looking up at the sky and kind of, making associations between what stars were there and what crops would grow and things that would happen. Um, but it's like Mercury retrograde, you know, so many people fear it and it, it's never an easy thing, actually. It usually gets quite expensive uh, with my car. That's a, it, it just costs me a fortune to keep my car going when we get into Mercury retrograde. So these things are all very real and so is December the 21st, 2020. But uh, I'm not going to say beware of it. I'm not going to say kind of let's all worry about that. Because uh, even if stuff does happen, particularly on that day, which it won't necessarily, but even if it does, um, <sighs> worrying about things doesn't really stop them happening. And it doesn't make them happen either. 
you know how many of the things that you've worried about my friends have actually happened uh, i'm guilty of that as well it's part of the human condition it's the way it goes anyway we'll pull some cards about this uh, in a minute but really you know the planets are quite a long way away from us even though they, they appear closer in the sky at some times of year than they do at other times they're still a long long way out in space and so their effects don't kind of pinpoint a particular minute or a particular um, second uh, with ast astrological birth charts you do notice a difference if you actually know your time of birth it, they are that little bit more accurate so sort of maybe within a day or so you know we could say something might be going to happen but i really wouldn't worry about it um, as we say it in britain keep your hair on keep your wig on keep your syrup of figs on as they say in cockney sli rhyming slang sliming rang rhyming slang whatever uh just just don't fear it okay i mean the big problem here is that saturn is involved and that is quite a pessimistic planet and that is going to spread doubt and fear and it's going to be part of what builds up the fears and the doubts as we go through this but look at some of the stuff we've escaped this year you know um the big pandemic thing has come in and taken over the world and um i don't want to take away from the huge number of lives that have been lost but i honestly think um if we match it up with the people who've uh, died because of flu we're going to find there's not that much difference there it's a kind of seasonal flu i'm sure of that it's a real thing wash your hands wear your mask all that by all means but you know it it, it just hasn't killed anything like as many people as they thought it was going to um there's the whole thing with president trump it's not long at all just a week or two since people were saying he would refuse to leave the white house and he'd do all this military stuff and uh you know that there'd be the end of the world caused by trump having battles and uh he's more or less realized that he's kind of got to give in now you know and i can't see that coming to a head in any really terribly destructive way because uh, he's a president you know and uh, behind the president behind our british prime minister behind the queen behind you know any leader there are large large numbers of people you might call them civil servants who are actually running the show and uh, they're the ones who've got the real power we just don't get to know their names so anyway really nothing much to worry about i'm going to do a quick three card reading you can pick a card if you like or you can pick all three using the ride away uh, deck this time and that's great actually because just as i'm flashing the deck to show you we've got the three of cups and that is a real positive thing now actually i'm not going to make that the one one of the cards in the reading but i'll take that as a significator because it just popped up there three of cups what if jupiter and saturn got together and they were two of the cups and what if the angels were the third cup what if you and i were the third cup and uh, the angels live within all of us by the way we see them as being kind of out there in the universe but really strictly speaking they're within us as well as they are outside of us it's one of those crazy uh, conundrums of the nature of life so jupiter saturn and something else going on and we've got a really positive card there so i think that's rather good that suggests an upward spiral now when things get bad it's very true that the only way is up and when you think about what we've gone through this year really the only way is up is it not i didn't quite finish what i was saying about the ancient babylonian astrologers by the way uh, they said that if you had eight eclipses which is the maximum number in a year that would be kind of very very uh, difficult year possibly packed with disasters this year we're coming up to the seventh eclipse and it's been complicated enough already i think to take count of those seven eclipses right so here we go first card out it's the chariot okay so this is going to be taking us on a journey and i reckon we're into that journey already friends it's number seven in the major arcana and you know this really is an intense time because i keep getting a large percentage of uh major arcana cards when i do readings and i'm doing private readings all the time you know so i've done several readings since the last video i'll do several more today i'll do several more tomorrow it's the way it works if you would like a private reading message me at 35and83 at gmail.com that is 35and83 at gmail.com and we will make an arrangement and i'll do it but anyway the chariot there um now 
unlike a conventional chariot, it appears to be made of stone. Maybe they've just painted it that way. But it's being pulled by two sphinxes. So it's a mystical journey, you know. And uh, whatever journey this Saturn and Jupiter conjunction is actually going to bring into being, it's probably the journey we're already on, actually. And uh, it's going to be a journey of the mind, you know. We're going to be somehow pushed to uh, find a way through whatever's going to come up. But maybe, maybe like 2012, nothing really major is going to happen on the day itself and we're all going to be left thinking, ah, oh, well, there was something wrong. It's the end of the world next week or the end of the world next year or something like that. Eight of Pentacles is the second card I've drawn, card number two. So this is the heart of the matter, OK? This is the middle card of the reading. And there's a lot of positivity behind this, but there's also a lot of hard work going on. Like the Three of Pentacles, it's steady progress, work is happening. Only now we're on the Eight of Pentacles and things are going well. But look at this guy. He looks kind of exhausted there with his club hammer. And I've used hammers like that. They're, they're very heavy indeed. I much prefer a nice small dainty hammer. If you sort of uh, just tap at the thing, it goes in in the end. But this guy is working with this great big club and he's bound to be tired by that. In fact, he's so tired that even though he's hung, he's hung one, two, three, four, five pentacles on the wall. He's got one leaning up against his bench and he's got one lying on the ground as well because he's just kind of too tired. He's got to make several more yet, at least another two, I would say, to get to the ten of pentacles. Um so there's more work to go, you know, that's the bottom line. And whatever comes into being, again, like I've said with the chariot card, there's going to be a journey and there's going to be more to it. There's going to be more work. It's just not going to be an easy thing, friends. OK, so I'll keep on shuffling. I'm going to do an Ascended Masters card in a minute as well uh, after this. And we'll do a quick inset of my beautiful cat Tinkerbell as well, just to keep it interesting. I'm not going to wake her up. I filmed it yesterday, just in case she was asleep again today, which she usually is. Knight of Wands is card number three here. And here we've got a galloping horse. We've got a journey on its way again. And it's a wand card that is all about getting things done. Now look at this one, there are one, two, three, four, five bunches of leaves growing out of it. Even though it's been broken off from the ground and it hasn't got its roots in the ground anymore, there are actually five leaves on there and they're green healthy leaves standing up, they haven't sort of wilted. So this is saying that whatever happens, you know, if our world gets turned on our head or whatever, which I doubt it will, but, you know, even if things get really disastrous around the 21st of December, it's nothing to worry about because somehow, you know, this wand energy says we will keep going, we will keep getting things done. And even though we may actually find ourselves cut off from our own support networks and, you know, the pandemic has done that in a big way, we will continue somehow to flourish. We're just going to have to find new ways of doing it and we're going to have to see it as a journey of the soul. We really, really are. Now, that's fire sign energy in the wand card. Leo, Sagittarius and Aries. Earth sign energy in the eight of pentacles here. Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn. I've got my cheat sheet just there, see, so just in case. And uh, getting them all in a mess now. Three of cups. That was water sign energy. Cancer, Scorpio and Pisces. The only one we haven't seen in those three there is the swords, the air sign energy. And goodness me, there's plenty blowing in the wind at the moment. Is there not? Okay, quick look at my cat. There is Tinkerbell for you. Now, animals are very, very psychic. Animals know stuff. And yet, she is actually super sleepy at the moment. Let's just go and see her again. She's still there on the bed. She hasn't even woken up, even though she knows now she's an internet star and people want to see her. She is sound asleep. She isn't worried, you know. She was out there this morning kind of trying to chase after a bird. And this little bird was inside my chicken run so she couldn't get it. But she was running backwards and forwards across the chicken run, trying to catch the bird. And she's just not bothered, you know. Um, and animals are so psychic. I'm sure if there was really stuff to stress about and worry about at the moment, all the animals would be in that kind of frame of mind. If you ever see a total solar eclipse, and you might very well, if, as long as it's visible in the sky wherever you are in the world, on the 14th of December, only a fortnight away, um, we'll have this solar eclipse. And as the sky darkens, it's remarkable. I live in between three farms here and there are animals everywhere. 
and it's the only time, day or night, when all the animals go completely silent. You don't hear a bird, you don't hear a dog bark. Well, sometimes you hear a dog bark because it's something crazy and they're trying to kind of warn us that something strange is going on. But it's a super, super quiet time. The animals really kind of get affected by it. But their response is just to wait and see. And that's the best way, it really is. Because I'll say it again, the stuff we worry about never really comes into happen into being never actually happens as badly as we think it's going to that's the nature of worry so an ascended master's card just to look a little bit deeper into this choose peace parmahansa is it yeah parmahansa yogananda i'm never sure what his name is exactly i remember him because he is an absolute star of anything to do with healing and anything around yogic practice as well so choose peace okay if you're concerned about this if you're worried about this thing that's coming up on 21st of december just breathe in slowly hold it for a couple of seconds and blow it out okay and do that again and again and uh, you will actually that way reduce the rate of your breathing and you will just feel so much more in touch with what is absolutely real which my friends is going to be the fact that we're all still here and we're all still doing okay despite all the prophecies of doom that are going on in the moment lots of purple in this card and it's got that lapis lazuli kind of blue border on it as well so uh, healing and spirituality spiritual healing that's what it's all about and you see my flag on the back wall there that's the dream flag uh, it's very very ancient the karmapa dream flag from buddhism um, and it was shown to someone in a dream one of the great deities of the buddhist faith saw that in a dream and uh, had it made up and said that uh, wherever that flag hands, tr hangs, truth and wisdom will prevail. And the reason for that is that you've got the lapis lazuli blue of the sky, maybe even the night sky, but that spiritual colour of connection to the afterlife, to the angelic realms, all of that is, is symbolised by the lapis lazuli blue. And you've got the sand which represents the earth, because this happened in a hot country, a very hot country. So you've got the sand blending in with the night sky so you've got the earth blending in with the heavens and that is how healing works that's how wisdom and truth work really it's never anything we can work out in our own minds but uh, as we come towards the 21st right another thing that's been said is that it's leading into the age of aquarius well it most certainly is you know uh, i'm not making a big thing of that myself because we've still got a good couple of hundred years before the age of aquarius comes in so we won't see it in this life i'm sure we'll all have reincarnated several times by then and i've no doubt that we'll see it that way when it comes in but it's not kind of suddenly going to happen on december the 21st we're on our way there and all the stuff that's going on in the world everything that's happening is leading there no getting away from it and why would you want to get away from it it's life it, you know it's kind of normal um it, it's what happens but every now and again in life in this earth in this universe there's a shooting star and there's one on the wall where is it just there just there on the uh, the other flag that's behind me and that's there because that's a kind of a metaphysical, a kind of a spiritual wall hanging as well of the sun and the planets. And um, shooting stars, they're natural, they're crazy. You don't see them very often, but you will definitely see the odd one or two at least in your, life, in your lifetime. Because on a very, very clear night, we can see a long way into the universe. And friends... I want you to kind of take this whole whole worry situation about the 21st of December and just look all that way out into the universe and think. I'm not going to say think how insignificant we are because we're very significant. This life, this earth is some kind of spiritual experience that the soul needs to have. So we are significant. But we are only one small part of what's significant in this universe. Um... Someone was asking me the other night, you know, um, are, are we kind of, um, is this happening to teach us a lesson or the craziness that's going on at the moment? And I don't know that it is. I think 
what's actually happened is that as we incarnate, before we come into this world, there's a plan for the incarnation we're going to have. There's a plan for the life that we're going to have. And we're born into this world on the day and at the time we're born into it so that when these big things happen like 2012 like 2021 all of those kind of things when they happen we will be at a particular stage of our development so they do affect us but it's always been meant to be and it, it, you know it's going to go on being meant to be nothing is going to come to an end I'm, I'm really confident of that maybe the world will blow up and prove me wrong but I don't think it will on that note, friends, thanks very, very much for watching. Um, I will just kind of say it again if I can find the card. Uh, yes, choose peace, all right? It's a choice. You can choose to get all concerned. You can choose to get your anxiety up. Or you can choose not to worry. Rather like Tinkerbell is not worrying over there and is sound asleep on my bed, which I haven't made properly, I must confess. Um, but you can choose peace, okay? That's the way to go. And uh, I think I'm going to put that in the title of this video, actually. Anyway, have a great December 2021. But, uh, you know, do keep on coming back and watching the videos. I'm really appreciative of everyone who's watched the videos just lately. And, in fact, for the kind of 10, 11 years that I've been doing them. Um, really appreciate everyone who's subscribed to uh, subscriber giveaway more about that in tomorrow's video actually but there'll be a subscriber giveaway on sunday so make sure you subscribe hit the subscribe button tap the bell to make sure you receive all the notifications and then you're in with a chance of winning meanwhile please do follow me on the social media the links are down there um, if you go on Facebook, just follow the Facebook link and it'll bring you to uh, Andy Lynch, which is my actual name. Uh, the Twig Brother page is something separate. I keep that separate because I might want to change the channel name. In fact, I think I will soon. I'm going to change it, I think, to Andy Reads. Okay, Twig Brother, there's a lot of reasons why I call myself Twig Brother and they're all in the past now. So I'm going to change the name of this channel to Andy Reads. Keep it here, keep it real. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this one, please. Leave me a comment, we'll share the journey. Meanwhile, have a fantastic time ahead and I'll look forward to seeing you again very soon. Love, light, blessings to you and peace. <laughs>